All right, let's go through these. Singapore, I guess it was a regional league, volume two. I'm not sure exactly the difference between this and a normal regional. Um, but as you can see, Paradox Rift was legal. Let's see what was topping. Aaron Tan won the whole tournament with his Lost Zone Tina. But I want to see other decks. We, do, we don't have all the lists, but we want to see some of these lists. There's a Cloth Electro. Damn it, that's a pretty interesting deck right there. That actually made it happen. But let's look at the number 13's uh, Zeng Wei. Lost Charizard. Four Comfy. Two Sableyes, Big Attacker, two Crams, the Radiant Charizard, Steel Games, and the Trapion for the for the Psychic matchup for Gardevoir. Really, really strong. Psychic Energy, two Fire, and one Double Energy. Damn, only six Energy is all he needs? Yeah, makes sense. Two Sableye, two Energy for the Sableye. Wow, this deck is amazing. I love when you play Lost Box uh, one Prizer decks. They're so insane. They're so like, they use such, so much little energy and they're so useful. Like they do so much with such little energy. Sable Eye can do so much damage, 12 counters every turn. If you can push this off early, like maybe you can activate it with a lost vacuum. If you can push, yeah, there's two lost vacuums. You can activate a little bit earlier. You can do one turn early as long as you hit your uh, Colrus. So that's why we run the four. You can activate the Sable Eye turn two, turn three, consistently with the Lost Vacuums, and you can do insane, insane work with this. You're just putting so much damage counters, and the opponent cannot really gain value from killing the Sable Eye. He kills the Sable Eye, you bring out another Sable Eye, that's 240 damage, basically two to three prizers easily. And then you just, if he kills all your stabilizers, you just super rod them back in and pick them up. It's, 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 it's really, really strong. Looks like the app is down, guys. Someone snuck in with Goldingo. <laughs> yeah, so Goldingo's good, guys. I, uh, it's actually really strong against, uh, like you said, the Chiampao. I think that's what, if the Chiampao is like huge in this matchup, you go for that. Uh, Goldingo, there's two TM Devos as well. Yikes, so you're not only worried about the Sable Eye uh like spread then you gotta worry about cram tm devoing you and then all that spread does insane amount of work now because you're just getting tm devoed and then you go and then basically you lose your whole board <laughs> that's insane that's such a strong matchup here so such strong deck uh these lost zone one prize decks are really strong especially when you can come steal games with radiant charizard yeah he can only attack once but if you switch him in and out you'll be fine especially when we run four escape rope four switch card you'll be fine wow very strong deck guys i think the uh, the escape rope can also help you against like roaring moon stuff that run about a bunch of attackers behind you charizards Force him to lose uh, really important pieces. But other against other decks, I guess it's not going to hurt. Like against another Lost Zone, doesn't what well, you're going to bring out a Comfy. Only one Mirage Gate, too. Obviously, makes sense. You're literally all, everything you run is one energy. Absolutely amazing. Let's uh, move on, guys. We're going to look at uh jeremy leong here another radiant lost zone charizard see how close it is to the same deck exactly the same lineup exactly same line of energy in pokemon and we have one more raihan here but it's pretty much the same exact lineup we have four crystals we're really looking for those sable eyes you can tell sable eye and cram and confey are really really important in this deck two fog crystals huge here Two counter catchers. Did the, did the last one run counter catchers? No, the last one went, went went for no. He did run two counter catchers. So you do run two counter catchers. So you do bring in uh, certain Pokemon to kind of maybe the Manaphy or the Jirachi to kind of get rid of it. Makes total sense, yeah. And then uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing with one Roxanne there. Artizone, so you can bring out all your Sableyes. You also he's also running TM Devos. <laughs> Really impressive, guys. Really impressive. And then we... Wait, what the hell is happening here? For 
for some reason it's calling it the Alex Shimanaski deck. Alex Shimanaski just got Charlotte Regionals with this. So this is a 100% competitive deck, guys. It's winning a lot. Moving on. We got the Gardevoirs here for Law. Anything special with this Gardevoir? Nope, it's just a Zacian V, Chrysilla, Screamtail, Gardevoir. Two of those reversal energies and a bunch of stadiums. Two Super Rods, he can pick up his Gardevoirs when he needs them. Four Ionos. Only one worker and one boss. Really interesting. Only two rare candies as well. Wow, very interesting. Deck here, Gardevoir is doing really good. That was number eight. Let's look at now, jump up to number four, Even Chang. Top four. Uh, sorry, guys, we just don't have all the top decks, but let's look at top four here. That's a Maradon between all the Sea of Lost Zone. Does Maradon actually have a good matchup against Lost Zone? I mean, I guess he could one shot the Tina. He can consistently get Iron Hands KOs. Let's see if he's running Iron Hands. Yep, he is running Iron Hands. That's probably how he was able to get ahead. The Iron Hands just uh, against the one prizers actually does a lot of work. You can bring him back up if you have a Super Rod as well. So you can use him twice with Electrical Generators and a DTE. You could really rely reliably bring him out every turn. Especially if you activate the Dino Motor. So one Dino Motor and Electrical Generator and one DTE can get this guy active one all over again. He's also running Luxray here. He's not running the stage 2 Luxray that just plays itself. This is another Luxray. Your opponent reveals their hand and discard the trainer from there. Discard 2 energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. A little bit more control. I doubt he actually used this a lot. Maybe towards the late game this is very useful. Getting rid of a very important like trainer like a, a rare candy when you really need it. Because everyone only runs 4. You cannot pick them back up. To get rid of 2 rare candies with this guy. Early or late, that's pretty much it. They're stuck. So it makes sense that Luxray is actually really good. Once you know the opponent has a, a really important card in his hand, you just try to Luxray it out. Interesting. Interesting strategy, to be honest. And of course, he's running the Zapdos, the Mew EX, the Squawk Billy there for more draws. We don't see Tapu Koko exactly. Different paralysis as well. Yep. So they are... There's always at least one paralysis. People go for the Tapu Kuku, but this one went for the Luxray. Let's see. And he's running a lot of energy as well. Let's see his lineup here. Two path. Wow. Honestly, think about it. Once Miradon. Miradon doesn't care about his abilities after turn one. You really just need tandem unit for turn one. Once you use tandem unit, you can just lock in that path and keep it on board. You really don't need your abilities. I see Tandem Unit and Squawk Ability, those are the only two abilities besides that. What, are you going to Mew EX? Like, who cares? Yeah, he has no... He doesn't lose anything. So, the only thing he's really losing is the Tandem Unit. But once you use it early, get that uh, Marip set up. And you have a big board with the Battle VIP. That's pretty much it. So, it makes sense you're going to go for the path. Absolutely. TM Devo at 1 for probably the Charizard matchups and any other... Weird matchups. It could also work against Baxcalibur. I noticed that the Chiampaws only run like two or three rare candies. They're not running four like Charizard. So they you can actually punish them if they threw out a, another rare candy in the trash. They don't have anything else. We got two Iono, two three boss, and three professors. Of course, the electrical generator popping. I'm surprised there's only one Arvin because they can find electrical generators. They can also find four seal stones. They can find you another electrical generator. So basically one Arvin equals to two gener generators. I'm surprised he only runs one. And then one super rod. That's, we talked about this. Bravery charm here works really well with the iron hands. And really his whole deck. <laughs> so yeah, guys. Really interesting deck. Uh, Mer Meridon. Totally different than any other Meridon I've seen before. As you can see. Oh, it's his own Maradon. I've never seen this Luxray in a Maradon. And he still performed really, really high level against really strong decks. So let's move back on and see what topped three Dion Suisse. Uh, as you can see, it's a heavy lost box meta in Singapore. 
Any differences? He is running one Mimikyu, slow down EX and V Pokemon. Charizard can get shut down by this. Roaring Moon can get shut down by this. But actually, the safeguard work against Frenzied Gouging? I don't think it works against Frenzied Gouging. Because you're just getting knocked out. You're not taking any damage. So it actually doesn't protect you against Roaring Moon. It does protect you against V and EX. So, I mean, a lot of decks. This is an actual Tina Lost Box. It's not just a one prizer Lost Box. A lot of people say one prizer Lost Box are better than Tina's. And actually, uh, Lost Box Tina is a little bit unfavored matchup against Lost Box uh, one prizers like Charizard. But they, these guys are doing really well. They're all three, top three is the Lost Box Tina. So let's look at this. Four Psychic, three Energy, and three Water, three Grass. So 14 Energy, that's... A little bit too uh, a lot. We usually see them running 30, and we usually only see two water, but makes sense if you're heavy on the Radiant Greninja. And honestly, in this meta with all the Charizard, and you can get, get rid of Comphase, you can get rid of so much stuff. Um, four Colrus, yeah. Four Mirage Gate. Let's see, anything special here that we haven't seen before? No, it's pretty much the same deck. Only seeing one Counter Catcher. And three path, yeah, it's just the same old Giratina Lost Box focused on the Colrus. It's getting as much uh, consistency with Poke Gear and Super Rod, and then sometimes they can steal you with a boss or a counter catcher. And but but really, what they're reliant on is getting that Giratina out uh, ASAP, and then they have Sableye and Cramorant to kind of do some damage. This one's actually running Mimikyu to slow down opponents. Certain the maybe he has bad matchups versus. Maybe they realize that they have a bad matchup versus Lost Box. I don't know. No, this actually doesn't counter Lost Box. I mean, actually, this does counter kind of Lost Box ones or one one uh, prizers. Uh, if you think about it, it counters the Dragonite V's. It counters the Luxray V's. It counters um, pretty much everything except the Radiant Charizard and the Sableyes and the Crams. I don't know, man. I'm not sure exactly what this is. What matchup is this perfect for? The best matchup for? I don't think it's even good against Roaring Moon. Maybe it's just good against Charizard. I don't know. And then Ditto here, just to keep it consistent. Pulls out the Ditto. He can make it make it any other Pokemon he wants. Really smart idea there. If you're uh, one, wanting a little bit more consistent early game, this is really, really good. The nice thing about these Lost Box Tinas is, guys, you're literally playing the same game over and over and over again. So it's basically the same hand over and over. So you really can get used to the game and go to a high level. Dennis, number two. Let's see the difference between his lost box and uh, and number three's lost box. No Mimikyu's here. We are seeing Jirachi. There we didn't see any Jirachi. So you're susceptible for the uh, Sableyes. Here we see Jirachi, but no Mimikyu's and no Ditto's. That's just a special strategy. Here we still see only 13 energies. So no... Instead of four jet energy, we're only running three. Uh, and then you'll see uh, pretty much this a very similar ma uh, lineup of trainers. The only real difference here we see is one Avery, and I I think I know what Avery is for. Avery is good against Roaring Moon. Avery is good against uh, other Lost Zone decks. Avery is good against a lot of stuff that needs to set up and take some time. Honestly, against Roaring Moon, this is insane if you play this early. You draw that three and then get rid of his uh, Mew Squawkabilly. And he's just stuck with a Roaring Moon, Galarian, and another Roaring Moon. Or a Radiant Greninja. That's pretty much amazing. I mean, <laughs> he, he's a little bit... I guess he loses that Mew, I guess. That's pretty much it. I mean, he loses a little bit of his consistency. Two escape ropes. So there's a little bit more switching here. So he went for... Instead of, usually people go for four switching, he went for three three switching, but he added escape ropes. So he went for five switching, basically. And then the only difference here I see is he added a nest ball. No, not even. He just added that Avery, which changed the setup of his uh, switch cart and nest balls. So everyone's running escape ropes at two? Let me see. No, not everyone's running escape ropes at two. They're running four switchers for sure, but not, not necessarily escape ropes. So we're running five switch uh, cards. 
two pocky gear 3.0 you really need this because if you don't hit that chorus early you're pretty much screwed I know two is a little bit too much but you really need that chorus also you can find the rock sands later three path and then let's go to number one Aaron Tan, the top of the top of the food chain, Lost Zone, Tina. This one has a Spirit Tomb. Okay, now which one is the best? Is it Luxray is the best Pokemon or Spirit Tomb? <laughs> or is it Mimikyu? Which one is the best paralyzing shutdown? Or, or is it Mawile? <laughs> I don't know. There's so many different decks here happening. I'm so happy with this meta. I'm not going to lie. There's Mawiles. Like, Control is not one meta. Control is a bunch of different card decks, and it's really, really interesting to see. Uh, this one actually runs the Spiritome Nojirachi, so we are susceptible for Sableye counters. Uh, let's see what we're running here. Four switches, three nest balls. And as you can see, basically, guys, this deck has been discovered. This deck is pretty much the same deck all over again. There is one card or two missing from every single list. But pretty much we're running the same lineup. Four Comfit, three Giratina, three Star V Stars, one Sableye, one Cram, one Radiant, and one Manaphy or Jirachi, depending on what you think is the matchup gonna look like. Or maybe both. And then you run the 13 to 14 energies. And then this lineup of trainers is almost exactly identical. One thing you could do is add a counter catcher, add a path to the peak, reduce a Poke Gear, stuff like that. But pretty much you're gonna utilize this lineup every single game. Very interesting. All right, guys, that's it for the top 16. Uh, what's what's your opinions on this? Damn, what happened to my camera? What's your opinions on top 16? Which one was the best deck in all of them? Let me know.